Well, you know, trade has become quite a hot button political issue on both sides of the Atlantic. And I think with the Brexit and the Trump administration, we're likely to see a renegotiation uh, or at least uh, a renewal of, of several trade agreements. Global trade, which has literally lifted millions out of poverty worldwide, is undergoing a dramatic transformation due in large part to the rapid digitalization of services and to the automation of manufacturing. If you think about it, the um, movement of goods is being surpassed by the movement of data and information. The multinational corporations of the 20th century with their manufacturing capabilities and distribution facilities worldwide are giving way to the global behemoths of the knowledge economy. And decisions that used to be premised on finding the lowest cost labor, uh, labor available are now being made on the basis of how automation impacts supply chains and lines of production. And on top of that, most of the agreements that really govern rules-based trade today were negotiated before the internet, before cloud computing, and before the explosion of robotics and automation. So given all that, it's actually a good thing that I think we're going to be taking another look at these. But, and here's the point, trade deals and trade politics today are toxic. And they are toxic because the rapid pace of globalization and digitalization and automation, despite new jobs that they have created, have also left vast swaths of society behind. And this is something that Donald Trump capitalized on in his campaign for the presidency. So as a result of that, if and when negotiations recommence, I think you're going to see the rhetoric be quite blustery and dogmatic. And I think you're going to see the negotiators focusing more on things like job creation, job protection, and balancing the challenge of balancing regulating the data flows that are necessary for modern business to uh, conduct, uh, be conducted with uh, concerns for privacy that you see largely in Europe. Now, the meaning of all this for investors, I think there are tremendous opportunities to both take advantage of the short-term dislocations that will occur during this transformative process, while at the same time, with good, solid, fundamental research, to identify those well-managed companies that are positioning themselves to be the long-term winners in this uh, process.